Hello friends, welcome to another tutorial in antenna and electromagnetics. In this tutorial, we'll talk about the intrinsic impedance of any medium. We'll calculate the intrinsic impedance or better known as characteristic impedance of any medium and once we calculate that expression, we'll find the intrinsic impedance of air also. So let us get straight into it. Let's look into the definition of intrinsic impedance. It is the ratio of the magnitude of E. So E is the electric field intensity. H is the magnetic field intensity. For a plane, wave in an unbounded medium. So there are two conditions for this expression to be true uh, because we know mathematically the intrinsic impedance is equal to magnitude of E upon magnitude of H. That will only hold true if the wave is transverse electromagnetic and it is traveling in an unbounded medium. So boundary conditions will not be applicable on this now if we wish to derive this expression or this equation which says eta which is the intrinsic impedance uh, which we know that it is equivalent to E upon H the starting point for the derivation would be to consider a wave which is propagating in X direction. Now if we have a wave that propagates in X direction we know that its component in the X direction will be zero. It, it'll have components in Y and Z direction because it it itself is propagating in the X direction. So X direction is the reference direction. So it will not have any variation in the X direction. E X and H X will be zero. And because it is propagating in X direction, so any change in the magnitudes of Y and Z will happen only with respect to curly by curly x. So these two components also become zero. So the components that will exist are E of y, E of z, curly by curly x, h of y, h of z. So these four components will go away if we consider a wave propagating in the x direction. So the leftover components, as I mentioned, they'll be EY, EZ, HY and HZ. So that will be our step number two. And the step number three will be to use the Maxwell's equation. Curl of E is equivalent to mu H. This is another representation of expressing mu into curly H by curly T. Expanding this thing curl of E uh, we could say that curly by curly Y and curly by curly Z are zero from here and E X is also zero from here. So what are we left with E Y E Z and curly by curly X on the left hand side and on the right hand side also we are left with only two components of H which are H Y and H Z again from this part. So that will be our step number three. The next step will be to solve that determinant and when we solve that determinant we know that everything will be differentiated with respect to uh, curly by curly x. So both the components E Z and E Y they will be differentiated with respect to curly by curly x on the left hand side and on the right hand side we can simply rearrange this. Uh, we could keep move this curly by curly t inside so we can have curly by curly t of h y a y and curly by curly t of h z a z and in the next step uh, we use the maxwell's equation curl of h is equal to um, d differentiation of d with respect to t curly by curly t of d uh, which can be also stated as epsilon e with a dot so 
again using the same solving the determinants on left and right hand side we get this thing just as we got this one please understand d can be expressed as epsilon e as uh, b can be expressed as mu h finally uh, by comparing a and b from these two equations we compare that uh, this part turns out to be equivalent to this part and this part turns out to be equivalent to this part so um, e of z is equivalent to h of y of course this is curly by curly x of e z this is mu into curly by curly t of h y and similarly we get this four equation so it is a relation between e z and h y e y and h z h z and e y h y and e z and of course on the left hand side we have um, rate of change of x and on the right hand side we have rate of change of t so we know that any wave that is propagating will change in space as well as in time so these equations are pretty sensible from that point of view now this is the most important part we need to express or we need to assume e y so we take one component e y which is existent e x is zero e y is present so i assume e y to be a function of x and t any wave which is propagating will change with respect to space so that is represented by a function of x and will also change uh, with respect to time and of course this is the velocity component v naught represents the velocity or the speed at which it is changing and minus sign represents that it is moving in the forward direction so <coughs> differentiating with respect to x so we need to differentiate e y now with respect to x and with respect to y in the next step so this is the assumed e equation which depends upon x and t so we'll differentiate twice once with x and once with t to get a relationship of f dash so that's the tricky part uh, otherwise everything else is pretty easy here if you differentiate with respect to x you get f dash to be equivalent to minus mu curly by curly t of h z so when you differentiate e y with respect to x you get this part and this vanishes so my f uh, dash is only this part this becomes one of course and i can express my f dash as minus mu curly by curly t of hz from uh, so now uh, we we come to a tricky part where i equate this thing with this thing because it is clearly mentioned that uh, curly by curly x of e y is equivalent to minus mu curly by curly t of h z here so this is the reference point we have equated this part with this part so my h2 becomes minus 1 upon mu integration of f dash dt and when i differentiate the same thing e y with respect to t i'll get this i'll get e y to be minus v naught integration of f dash dt so now now i'll divide e y with h z so this is h z this is e y i divide e y and h z so i get v naught upon one upon mu or in other words i get mu into v naught v naught is one upon mu into epsilon this is a well-known formula uh, which states that the velocity of the electromagnetic wave in any medium is given by 1 upon mu naught epsilon naught under root so i substitute this v naught here so i get e by h z to be equivalent to mu upon epsilon under root which is also known as eta or the characteristic impedance so that is how we uh, calculate that is how we derive the characteristic impedance of the wave in any medium again next the elementary parts are left uh, we know that the uh, if we assume ez 
again to be a function of x and bt so all this thing uh, is done again and i get ez upon hy to be equivalent to minus eta because this is this will come out to be minus under root mu upon epsilon from this equation i have ey by hz from this equation i have ez by hy and both of them are equivalent to eta so i can place this negative sign here so i can say ey is eta into hz ez is minus eta into hy in the last step we can say that my e vector constituted ey and ez components substituting these values here i get eta hz ay cap minus eta hy az cap <coughs> taking mod on both the sides i get modulus of electric field intensity to be equivalent to eta times modulus of magnetic field intensity and this is a very 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 important relationship and we use it a lot of times in the numericals so eta is equivalent to the ratio of e upon h or in other words mu upon h uh, sorry mu upon epsilon this should be epsilon please make a correction here this is epsilon so this relation is super super important and if we want to calculate it for the free space we can simply put the values of mu not and epsilon not and we'll get eta not which is the uh, characteristic impedance of air mu not is 4 pi into 10 to the power minus 7 epsilon not is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 so we get 377 ohm as the characteristic impedance of the air so that is how we calculate the characteristic impedance of a wave in any medium and once we get to this formula we can easily calculate the impedance of the free space which we are supposed to remember by heart which is 120 pi ohms so that's about it for this video if you liked the video give it a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel as well i'll see you around in the next video take care bye bye